Mysterious Monkeys, the former Misfits Academy, taking on their sister team, and it might be Monkey See, Monkey Do. Get fresh, get fresh, get fresh. Get fresh. Get fresh. The backside, a lot of damage onto Yuki Fox. He leaves it again! Not gonna get anybody though. Yuki nice sidestep, dodging what he can. Yuki's still alive. Last time I played against Amazing was a year ago. Keeping them healthy, but the Baron is still doing damage to Yarnit in the back, and the Wish comes in to keep Fnatic. The shields, the heals, they're it's everywhere, but she has been taken out by Maxor. Like, as an underdog, you can have to throw in a couple of curveballs. So, actually, like, going by the meta makes the enemies already be prepared for you. I don't know, I just felt like this guy was not that great. He was just okay. It's going to be funny to face Koskyo. He was Misfits Academy mid laner, and obviously, if you're a Misfits Academy, you want to win against Misfits. Nope, that's a deletion, and now the fight is starting up. Go on! Like, I think we're good friends. I would call us friends. I know. If, I don't know if Costco sees the same. I know from Misfits Academy teammates that you always wanted to win against me in scrims, and you always wanted to win the lane against me. It's going to be a fun match. Well, welcome back to the summer split. Splice and Ninjas in pajamas are about to go head to head, but we have the Fischio, Maxlor, and Alfari on the desk, and it's Great always UK nice. Lads. UK lads, a Danish lad, a Belgian lad. Oh, I'm also lads. a UK lad. Oh, you are also a UK, a UK lad? Okay, fine. Uh, it's always nice to see the intro video again after your victory because we see how we thought it would play out and how it eventually played out. So, you know, how happy are you with your performance, Alfari? Uh, with my performance? I mean, I played okay. Like, it wasn't <laughs> first, the toughest of competitions, let's be fair. Kick is an amazing. Ah, but, uh... Oh, is that a bit of a, a jab there? I mean... Yeah, but possibly. I don't think they're the greatest <laughs> players in the world, but I'm happy that we won and uh, we played okay. Like, Max Law entered me a little bit by uh, Flash Wing a Jace when there's three people both sides. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Know. It, 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 it was fun. It made me giggle. I mean, I think you are correct in that it was obviously not a number one team you were playing and it was kind of your job to finish it off cleanly and that's what you did. So, anything to add, Max Lor? No, not really. We played uh, pretty easy comps. Um, Fortunately for us, Amazing pointed out, our, pointed out our mistakes to us on the interview last week. He said, <laughs> we're only early game team. We shouldn't really play too hard comps. And I feel like it's kind of reversed today. We played really easy comps and I think their comps were just a little too hard for them. So I feel like you guys were... <laughs> They're feeling good. They're feeling good. Yeah, and I think you guys were kind of affected by what went on in the social media game. The mind games There's are taking a, lot a toll. Yeah, uh, a lot recently. of that. It's good. If it makes all the teams in Europe get better by them trash talking yep. each other, I support it. Me too. Uh, and you guys can't see it, but there is a piano board where Max Lore is sitting, so maybe he'll play some tunes later. But I'm we're going to focus in on the game. Splice <laughs> is going up on the stage. And Splice, I think, is a team that reminds me a bit of you guys in that they are now middle of the pack looking to kind of find that next step against a good team or, or one of the best teams. They haven't been able to beat Fnatic. They haven't been able to beat G2 or H2K. So they're looking to find that next step. What do you think of their relative level now, Max Lore? Splice? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say their biggest problem coming into the split was the early game. Uh, they still showed against G2 that they have problems, but it's definitely a lot better because before it was just uh, people were just running it down early game. And now at least their bot lane is doing pretty good. Their mid and jungle synergy is a lot better and Wanda's just Wanda, this guy. As long as he has his jungle playing around him, I think he's a pretty strong player. Yeah, where do you rank Wanda, Alfari? Uh, I think I'll probably rate him like a top four, top lane on Europe, maybe five, but he's pretty good. But like so of uh, expect or so I would rate him higher. Okay, what does he bring to the matches? His laning phases and his decision making in the mid game. I think uh, like Splice in general will play like well around him. So if you can even, if they can get him on a carry, and if you can like put some resources into him, like you see them like playing like today or trashy investing early against top side, mm -hmm. then uh, Wanda like usually does well. Unless he goes like zero seven on a Kali, that's uh, happens. Yeah, that happens. Like, that's a BG, but usually like they can snowball him and he'll keep an expect push. I want to add on uh, just to the, the points they were making about you know them getting a little bit early game, a better early game now. They're playing around Wonder as well. The thing I want to see from Splice is actually kind of the same thing I want to see from you guys uh, some time ago. It's just like discipline in what is your actual game plan. Because last week they would draft the Jax, they played around the Jax, they got early kills for Jax, and what did they do? They ran face first into the first team fight they saw possible, completely misplayed it, TP'd in wrong, lost the Reminds fight. Reminds me of a certain Kennen game. Might have happened for other teams in Europe as well, but. If you are spliced, like, if your win condition is the jack split push, like, commit to it then. Yep. Don't just 
face first into a 15 minute team fight, you completely lose and you lose everything. TLDR, don't disappoint the Fischio. We've talked a lot or about Slice. Or Max. Or Afari or Max. Or we need to move on, but quickly, if NIP is to do something in this series, how are they going to do it? Uh, if they're going to do anything. Seems uh, like that's the answer. Uh, draft the yeah. same kind of comes as. Uh, as uh, we saw from Misfits. A lot of engage, run five man mid, and just try and force team fights. All right, we'll see what happens. And if Splice can strike back with a win against the Ninjas in Pajamas, Medic, take it away. Thank you, Shox, and good evening, everyone. I'm Aaron Medic Chamberlain, joined by James Stress O'Leary once again. You get double me this week, Stress. Usually people have to pay for the pleasure. I was going to say, that's why I got insurance at this point. This is too many dog disappointments to. Uh, to really contend with. But honestly, we're here for Ninjas in Pajamas versus Splice. I think this is going to be a great game. Uh, I've been hyped about all of today's games. I was a little bit disappointed with uh, only getting two games from the first series. So here's hoping. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Let's take a, look, take a look at the teams to start us off. It's Ninjas in Pajamas on the blue side. NIP still yet to win a series this split. They do have a chance to come fourth in, sure. in their group. The question is, if they don't start winning soon, do they still have that opportunity? Well, this is a big matchup to test that in because their opponents on the other side of the rift are Splice. And we've talked a lot about how there's so many changes in the jungle. Well, one jungler that likes his tank junglers is Trashy. And I'm excited to see what he can do on 714. A couple of other picks in the fray, but I think we're heading very quickly towards champion select. And that means we get to see all the fun stuff. 714. It's yep. still a patch that I don't think we've hit the full potential of here, Stress. We've seen Cho'Gath get through a couple of drafts. We've seen tank junglers rise up in the meta. Is there anything that you are waiting for, anything that we're expectant of in this draft phase? I don't think I'm expecting anything we haven't seen yet to definitely come up. There's a couple of outside fringe picks, but one thing the last series showed us actually is I don't think Renekton is quite a safe blind pick as it is anymore because that uh, Bramble Vest actually did a good job of shutting him down in the lane. We'll see whether either of these teams do draft that way. But as we come in, LeBlanc, very high priority ban in the last couple of days. Same with the Zac. And the Gragas has seen as a lot of play. And of course, Trashy, four splice on the Gragas. What do you know? He loves playing that. Always has success. Yeah, no real surprises with that being taken away from him. His most played jungler across the course of this split by a long margin. We'll have an Elise ban as well coming out from Splice. Now that leaves the Caitlyn. You've also got the Cho'Gath to come through. And then Thresh as the last priority. Now, Kalim over the last day or so has risen in priority as well, getting good laning uh, setups, getting good early skirmishes as well. So interesting to see how Callista has risen over since yesterday's initial games. And alongside that, you have that tank busting potential with the Callista to a degree. We are going to see a tank taken away by Splice and immediately Ninjas in pajamas going back to that Caitlyn. Was changed slightly on 714. Her attack speed modifier reduced by 2%, but it's not too big a change. So now you give up the likes of uh, potentially the Thresh, but it's the Braum that comes out. We've seen this combination very heavily played over the last day. The Braum, the Sejuani, the passive stacking and the slows, the crowd control that comes through is very difficult to deal with. And this is very good setup for Trashy on the remaining junglers with the Zac gone, the Gragas gone, the Elise gone, the Cho gone. So much focus, and now NIP have to get shook on something else. The Kha'Zix would be there if he wants a carry jungler. And that's more shook style as well. He's known for these assassin junglers, the Kha'Zix, the Lee Sin, the Elise to some degree as well. Perhaps the Rek'Sai just skirting on the edge of that meta. We will see Nagne get that Talia and perhaps he'll be Lord of the Pit once again. And it looks like it might be a Syndra here for Splice. Yeah, the Syndra here would be able to secure a lane matchup. We know Splice like to get scaling components from their mid or top lane. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Splice wait for the counter pick now on the top lane for Wonder, depending on what profit ends up drafting. But as we head into ban phase two, I don't think there's anything overly surprising right now in this draft. The biggest component of Splice's draft has been hit, shook immensely hard. All four bands right now potentially aimed towards that jungle role. Yeah, getting rid of the Orexai as well. There is still that Kha'Zix lurking in the wings that we have talked about. Ninjas in pajamas are going to go towards the AD carry bands here, taking away the Jin, looking towards perhaps those AD carries that can utilize Duskblade. Yeah, and taking away one of these AD carries that can at least have a decent laning phase against the Caitlyn. We've also got to look at the Varus here is another pick. Uh, the Tristana we may see, but gets outranged quite heavily early on. Pretty much every champion suffers that against the Caitlyn, so you basically have to decide to play for a little later in the game. 
It's going to be a Kha'Zix ban here against Shook as well. So Splice have read our minds, have been doing their background research, know that Shook likes that Kha'Zix pick. Lee Sin is still there, something he's played a few times across this split. Graves and Olaf, his other two champions he's picked up. So Jack's now gone, may indicate Profit wants to play the Javan up in the top lane. And if Splice were to pick Renekton, we just saw that matchup be contained very well. The Varus we expected out of Splice coming through into the Kaelin is no big surprise. But look, now Shug has to find something. You mentioned the Lee Sin coming through. Will it be one of these outside picks, the Skana, the Ramus, the, these B-tier tanks that can still work, or is it going to be early game focus coming through? It would make sense for Ninjas and Pajamas to play around the early game. The early <laughs> game has been their strongest portion throughout this split. It is going to be the Javan that you alluded to earlier on, Stress, and now final pick for Ninjas in Pajamas. I would love this Evelyn. <laughs> this is something that Shook was known for actually when he played on Alliance when they made their bid for Worlds in 2015. Not going to perhaps go towards it here. It's a very outside play style. Difficult to play around, but I think we're likely to see the tank setup coming through here. We just saw Maokai played in the previous game. I was saying we're expecting tanks. No, we're not. We're expecting the Lee Sin coming through. <laughs> in the end of all things, they bait us out. That they do. A, a composition very similar to a lot of the ninjas compositions we've seen throughout the split. Splice still have their last pick and it will be looking up towards that top lane. Now, we've got the Camille locked in. Of course, that can do a very similar job uh, of the Jax later on. It's a little trickier for Camille to take over, but you can have that side lane control later on. Profit, I expect to get a lot of attention from Shook in the early game to try and get him ahead, try and push Wonder behind and actually get NIP rolling because remember, Nagne can go there as well, utilizing that Weaver's Wall. And it's interesting to see how the draft priorities actually changed for these teams because a couple of weeks ago, we would have said Thrash's must pick, must ban. Caitlyn's must pick, must ban. Here, we see NIP get both of those and we still look at the splice lineup and say, well, they got Sejuani and they got Braum and that's a superior combo in a lot of respects. I think what Splice were going for with the route you're talking here is they don't actually fear NIP's snowballing opportunities. They don't think that NIP can close a game with a lead. And sure enough, that is something we have seen NIP struggle with. So maybe they have the way, the way now of playing around this Lee Sin, around this snowballing, and deny them any opportunity to close out the game. If you think NIP will take their first series of the split, make sure you get involved at LOL Esports. Hashtag NIP win or hashtag SPY win if you think Splice can keep the road to Worlds alive. It's incredibly important that they win today to keep their hopes for playoffs going on. If they lose, they are pretty much looking at that fourth spot stress and it with it, no chance of getting to the World Championships once again. Splice will be wanting desperately to maybe regain some of their status. The World Championships didn't necessarily go so well and they haven't been doing a great job so far in the 2017 season when you look at high placements at the end of a split. But summer might be the time for Splice. They had this big run last year that worked out very well for them. See if they can replicate some of that success again as we head into game. Ninjas in pajamas, it should be a fairly straightforward series from Splice's side of things. They're expected to win this. Definitely the underdogs on the blue side for this first game. And they've drafted a composition that is not too dissimilar from ones we have seen them draft in the past. Splice, on the other hand, going for this tank jungler, going for the Braum early on as well, really looking towards this crowd control composition that works so well as soon as you catch one person out. So when you look at the lane setups, of course, Senkux is likely to have the early game presence in mid lane. You'll have that push priority that should give Trashy a little bit more freedom. Shook can't quite go as aggressive into his jungle because of the fact that uh, Nagne is likely to be shoved in. Profit, you'd anticipate having a little bit of an early start against this Camille should be able to do a decent job, but it's not so Minions difficult for Wonder that he can't play safe in this lane and just maintain this Jarvan. It's the first time we've seen Wonder on this Camille this split. I have to see how well he does with that split pushing meta that, that has arisen in some compositions. And then finally, down in the bottom lane for NIP, HeQ and Spradl should be able to have at least decent push potential utilizing the Caitlyn, the laning strength of the Caitlyn and the Thresh alongside, but Braum Farris will be able to play on the defensive here. Wave clear, sit back in the lane. 
We'll see whether Cobby and Mickey actually go towards that because I know, Medic, you've been looking into a lot of how Cobby and Mickey play in their bot lane. And as much as the lane might seem like it's going to push towards them, Cobby and Mickey actually spend a huge amount of time pushed past the mid portion of that wave. Over almost 40% of the early game for Mickey is spent pushed into the enemy's side of the map. So as much as the lane may play against them, we'll have to see if they're willing to accept standing underneath their tower and farming. We spent so much time talking about bottom lane that we didn't actually hint at the fact that Nagane, he took a small raptor away. Shook didn't quite get the level off the camp, and that means Nagane as he went forward. Now off the red buff, it's going to be hurting a little for that experience. It did help Nagane get the level two, though, in the lane, which is actually quite a nice thing because Nagane is able to reverse some of this early game pressure on Senkux. And we'll keep our eyes on that bottom lane point that you were talking about, where the Kobe and Mickey are pushing forward in the lane. It's one of the things that makes it very difficult to contend with on the splice. Bottom lane is they're very aggressive. They know when to take the trades in the lane, and they're very good at punishing their opponents. Against Caitlyn Thresh, maybe not so much. Spellow will land the hook. Mickey's going to have to dodge his way around the tasty cupcakes in the bottom lane and will be fine for the time hang on, being. Hang on, hang on. Those cupcakes are for yordles. They're yordle snap traps. Medic, you are the least yordle-like person on our broadcast <laughs> crew. They are not for you. It doesn't mean I don't find them tasty. Sometimes forbidden fruit is the most delicious. Stealing cupcakes. I see how it is. That How do you think I got to this size? Here. How do you think I got to this size, Stress? <laughs> Very it, it wasn't. It wasn't just because <laughs> I took the food that was given to me. I managed to sneak some away from time to time. And at the moment, Shook is looking to sneak up towards this top lane. We talked about it in Picks and Bands. He wants to be coming up towards this top to try and get profit ahead in this lane. And look at how easily red this is out of Splice aside. Wonder drops back in the lane. This wave is pushing towards Wonder, and he can just sit back and farm it out, maybe get this one if he's not too overzealous at it and drop back. Yes, okay, now his shield is gone, so if it dives under the tower, he's a little bit more in danger. But Wonder isn't playing this riskily by any means. He knows he has to concede some of the early game, and Shook just spent a lot of time up in this top lane, as Shook likes to do. He stands around in the back of lanes and doesn't do a whole lot sometimes. And he's 10 CS behind because of it. That's Trashy getting the Krugs. Gives you 10 CS just off the back of them, and now <laughs> he's act Shook is just that little bit behind, but has gone for towards the double long swords, probably up towards the warrior enchant that we tend to see on the Lee Sin. Stress, I want to talk a little bit about tank busting in the current meta because sure. it's such an important thing for AD carries to do, and it's the reason we're seeing more Callista and more Tristana coming up. We've got a Caitlyn here who has been known as a late game hyper carry, but in the mid game, she can sometimes struggle to get through tanky front lines. Absolutely, uh, until you get past both the attack speed items and then the Lord Dominix that comes through into a build, it's so tough for Caitlyn to actually deal damage to the front line. That's where we, I'm wondering whether we'll start seeing a few more of the tank busting mid laners that come through, or at least the scaling mid laners, but I'm not expecting to see a resurgence of like an Azir coming through. It's not quite the time. Varus, on the other hand, does have decent tank busting capabilities. Now, MIP don't necessarily have the greatest front line of tanks, but still, Kobe should be able to output a significant amount of damage earlier on in the game for HeQ. Just coming back to those tank busting mid laners as well. I've heard rumors of a Mausahar. Yeah. More in NA than EU, but you never well, know. Senkox has played it this split. They are the kind of team that like playing that Mausahar with the teleport for a 1 3 1. Maybe we'll see that in a future game. Have yeah. to wait and see. It's always a possibility stress. A pretty slow early game from these two teams. Shook not being able to get the ganks off towards the top lane that he would like, but now he's going to see if he can catch tra Trashy out. Unable to do so, he will claim the Scuttle Crab for his own and be satisfied with the increased vision in the river. Now we've got to look at what Splice put into the draft and what they've taken out of it, because they hit Shook's champion pool so hard that he went to the champion he always plays in Lee Sin. Now, the reason they did that is because Lee Sin is in this awkward spot where you have a good early game, but you don't team fight anywhere near as successfully as a lot of the tanks in the meta right now. So Shook has to have some sense of impact in this game. We are six minutes in and he has done nothing. Doesn't yet have his ultimate available. We'll see where he goes once he's past that level six. Minute. And I think that's a big thing, Stress. That ultimate can be very impactful if you can catch out low mobility carries in the back right. line. He can try and jump onto Syndra. He can try and jump onto Varus. And if he does get one of them, perhaps that can turn the team fight. But it's a big if. Yeah, it is a big if. Senkux, as a side note, 
looking at our last series with Power of Evil's mo mobility Syndra build. This is a Thunderlord's not going Frost Queen's claim, <laughs> likely Syndra. This is more about damage. But here we go, Shook, heading to the top side. He's warded, he's not gonna do anything. Once again, NIP no options on the top side, and that means Splice will be happy to wait for a bit because Trashy's ult is a whole lot easier to have impact on. Well, we talk time and time again about the NIP early game leads that they managed to gain. It's one of the only portions, really, where we see NIP getting ahead. And you can see, even against a team like Splice, who've been looking relatively consistent, NIP have the lead. They're ahead in at 15 minutes in gold. They get a lot of first bloods tied first for that. And they are good at denying the enemy towers. And they're looking to set themselves up potentially for a play on the top side. But Wonder is playing on the defensive aspect, although Shook, now he's backed away, was spotted. Oh, Wonder's now coming forward in the lane. Gotta be very careful, he doesn't get caught here. Here goes Prophet, but Wonder wall jumps away. Shook still not six, is looking for the kill. Here comes Prophet once Ooh. again, the Cataclysm. Oh. And the pull straight away. Whoa. It was a great flash from Wonder. He is outside of the Cataclysm, but we'll have to find out exactly what's going on here. I can see the referees talking with Prophet and the ninjas in pajamas. So hopefully we'll get an, up an update for you soon. But look, we were talking about how top lane was maybe one of the areas we wanted to see NIP go to. With this Talia, with the Javan, try and get everybody in the top lane and snowball him through. And we're, we're at that pivotal moment here, where for NIP, they've gone aggressive with the play we were expecting from them. And we need to see what the result ends up being, because Splice are actually okay with waiting a little bit longer in this game at least with the top lane. And once again, it's Shook on an aggressive jungler being able to try and get these leads for the team. If Wonder does fall here, that's first blood. It's a lot of damage on the tower as well. You make Wonder have to burn his teleport to get back into the lane, and Shook will probably hit six, which just accelerates that gank potential. Yeah, it, it's been a decent attempt here from NIP. One thing that has also been going their way that is a little surprising on the matchup uh, is the fact that Nagne, through getting level two early and being able to make his way back into lane, utilizing the level two boots, it's actually got a lead here. We're getting right back into the game. Remember, Wanda is in a lot of danger in the top lane. And... Here we go. He's able to he's walk safe. away. Yeah, so Shook <laughs> didn't flash. Sorry. Decide he decided he didn't want to go all in for it. Wanda does have to back away, which means NIP will get some damage on that top lane tower. And the question becomes now, what, what's Trashy gonna do? Where can he go to try and play around the fact Ooh. that Shook's on the top side of the map? Well, look how heavily Nagne was pushing. Trashy does get caught on that ward though, so Trashy doesn't have the opportunity to go in. But I like this, Mickey's gonna come out of the lane. This is something Mickey very frequently does when they're pushed up, is move out with Trashy, assume control of the enemy jungle, and then back away, they just take the red buff, don't overcommit to the fight, but look, TP's coming through, NIP wanna Sprouse force Sprouse are trying to Ooh. get in the way of the Arctic Assault, but Trashy uses it afterwards. Here comes the wall as Trashy's caught out. Ace in the hole comes down, and Prophet gets first blood. Tried to jump across, could not connect onto Senkux, but the kick back from Shook. Senkux has to flash away. Nardine flashes the wall, but cannot hit the knock back, and NIP will have to settle with just one kill. Well, this is what NIP, we talked about them being good at, and this is actually a response to something Splice do very frequently. We were talking about it, how Mickey and Trashy, when they see the jungler topside, they go into the bot side jungle, get vision down, and instantly Prophet comes in with the teleport. They get the first kill of the game, and that's a great start for NIP. This is in line with what they have been doing for a few weeks now. It looks like Splice are going to try and react to the fact that Prophet gets that red buff and gets the first kill. They're bringing their bot lane up here. Trashy's on his way as well. Prophet, no flash, no TP, no help from Shook for the time being. Cobby's got six. They yeah. could look for the engage. But at this point, Prophet knows that because the bottom lane hasn't come back into the lane, he has to be careful here. A lot of respect being given over in the top lane for this game. Now Splice want to try and race down this Caitlyn and Thresh. And they should be a little bit faster on it, but they may get baited into the fight here. Shook is around, but Trashy throws the ult. Glacial Prism comes out into the chain of corruption, and that's the CC chain from Splice. Another kill for them. Shook's gonna jump in, though, trying to get onto Wonder, and Nagne's doing a lot of work, threading the volleys where he can. The stun's gonna land onto Shook. Trashy will go down one for one now as Nagne gets chased out by Cobby. Another threaded volley will connect, and they do not get the tower. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, NIP will get first turret blood. So NIP, the gold swing 
Sting goes over to NIP with the first turret blood going over. But look, Splice, they got a little bit of momentum on the top side. And importantly, two kills go on to Kobe. This is going to strengthen his earlier game spike that we might see have influence in the next few skirmishes. But look, good ult from Trashy hits on to Profit in the lane. Of course, if you don't hit that square, you will only get the slow. So manages to get the full amount of crowd control from there. Trashy, not quite tanky enough this early on. Hasn't obviously finished the Cinder Hulk. We are too early on in the game for that. So it doesn't quite recognize the amount of damage output. But look, Kobe picks up two kills. Good start for Splice on the top side. Got to commend NIP at the same time. They are still marginally ahead. Ever so slightly, but what getting those first towers does is it opens up longer lanes for these top laners. Wonder now on this Camille can try and farm up just a little bit more, try and get towards that two, three item Camille that we have seen be a terror in the late game. And it looks like Splice are happy just to scale up into the late game here. Yes, you're facing a Caitlyn. Yes, you're facing a Talia, but you have three strong sources of damage compared to only the two from NIP. Oh, Medic, look at it. It's another Bramble Vest on Javan. We saw this contain Renekton in game, in our series one of the day today. Now, I wonder how much that's going to do against Camille. Obviously, returning a lot of the damage, the resistance is. Doesn't matter at this point because he keeps getting caught out. Does have flash, does have heal, Land dodges. Here. The Winter's Bike judges the Glacial Prism, and perhaps they're going to turn this one around. But here's Senkux on the flank. He meets three members of NIP and needs to back away for the time being. HQ now caught out. The play comes back Ooh. onto Wonder. That's a kill on Shook, and HQ will fall as well. Two for Splice very quickly. Another important fight for the Splice boys as they turn towards Rift Herald right now. And look, NIP had had good trades early on, but Senkux being able to roam out of the lane mixed with the amount of damage, even with the crowd control not quite landing, Splice just had enough to take it to NIP, and NIP didn't realistically have enough to respond. And that very well could crack this game open for Splice. Now, with the Rift Herald, they can push past this Talira should they choose to. Maybe, maybe start controlling the game a whole lot more, because look, he, he knew he was in danger all the way from the beginning of this play and actually does a decent job. Flashes the Q from Braum, dodges out, then gets the Lantern, eats basically the, the cooldown now of the Braum ultimate, but from their NIP, they think they can go aggressive. Not the case as Senkux. You know, the skill just shows there when you press R. It takes a lot of skill. Yeah. It takes, takes a lot, lot of skill. skill. Cho'Gath is like the new equivalent. Uh, you I, have I to press wait. two buttons for Cho'Gath though. Yeah, I guess. Stone plate and then R. Ah, double the amount of skill. Takes tons of skill. Come on, stress. But what I like from Splice here is in picks and bands, and earlier on we were talking about NIP's early game. Splice have been able to shut that down. NIP are going to be behind around the 15 minute mark, and Splice are taking advantages across the map. Yeah, they've done a good job of actually recouping a lot of the, the losses they had against NIP. You can see bot lane is even when it comes to the CS kills in favor of Splice. Senkux has caught back up on some of that pressure that Nagne had had on him early because of the level two. Splice easily tracking NIP through the bottom side jungle, so not getting caught out on that one. And it's only a matter of time before they pop that Rift Herald. Um, potentially even in the bottom lane now if they look for it, but they're grouping around, heading bottom and then mid and a little bit indecisive from Splice here. Is an Ocean Drake for them there if they want it. You want to get those earlier on in the game to help you in these earlier skirmishes. And we see a lot of uh, teams use the Rift Herald down towards the mid lane stress. That tends to yeah. be where people want to open up the map a little bit more. Yeah, of course, when you've got a Talia in the lane, it's good at pushing it back out. You just kind of give her a problem so big you can't deal with it uh, and just crush through mid lane. Very easy concept that you see a lot against the Orianna. A lot of teams, however, kind of just wait on Rift Herald, and you see the jungler panic and go, oh no, I've got to just spawn it wherever. This is not one of those times. A Five splice. Man group. Here you go, with the wave. Gonna push it through mid lane. No sign of the enemy minions either for now. Exactly what you want to see from Splice. They group up mid, they will get the turret pretty easily. NIP have no way of reacting. You know Hiku's in the bottom lane, you know Prophet's in the top, and that's a mid lane tower for Splice. And importantly, Hiku has nothing to gain bottom side apart from a little bit of farm and experience. He cannot afford to push up to that tower. And Prophet was so far back in the lane that he couldn't threaten a tower kill either. So it means Splice had set the map up for their Rift Herald play. And and executed it really nice. From here though, NIP, you have to look at what can they do to get back in this game? 
it's going to revolve around getting picks, utilizing Shook and potentially Profit. But look, MIP trying to push down the mid lane tower. It's not like they have a Rift Herald to do this. It's not quite as strong. Braun puts up the Unbreakable and stops a lot of the damage. Something we talked about in Picks and Burn stresses and was talked about on the Analyst Desk by Deficio was they're saying Spice have had these good drafts. They've been able to get through pick and ban very successfully with strong compositions, but they don't quite execute those compositions that well. Here we see them playing around Trashy, playing around the fact that Wonder was camped early on, and it seems very much more like they, they understand what they want to do with this five-man composition. And Splice, I think, historically have always felt confident when they could have Wonder ahead in the side lane. Uh, you take it to the next level when Senkux can do that, but this isn't that type of play style for Splice right now. And I'm glad to see them looking at executing these compositions because, look, everybody is bringing a form of crowd control, and that makes team fighting exceptionally easy when you just land one stun and you just keep stunning the same target over and over and over. Lock them in the, the ultimatum as well, just throw everything. And from there, Splice should have very linear team fights, whereas NIP, this game is about to turn into protect EQ at all costs. And when the enemy have got a Syndra, and a Camille, it's not exactly easy. And one of the problems for NIP as well is they're starting to fall behind on gold. They're about a thousand down now, and it begins to tell slightly in the items. Chain of Corruption actually misses as he Q gets away, but you look at NIP and they're, they're going down this defensive path with items. Bramble Vest is something we do see commonly early on from top laners, yep. but a Banshee's Veil on Nagne is his first completed item. Compare that to Senkux, who has a Morello Nomicon and a needlessly large rod. I know where I want my damage to come from. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, a lot lacking on the damage. Now, of course, Nagne is looking to kind of deny some of that early crowd control. You don't want to get hit by a Sejuani ultimate from half the map away and uh, get killed in the middle lane. But as you said, Mercury Treads Banshee's Veil isn't going to have the most amount of damage output on top of that. That means they need to look at profit, potentially for more damage, or you're trying to do what G2 have been successful with and rely purely on a Caitlyn. But, oh, Prophet, he's going to use his TP, and Splice are not going to commit to that. So that is the summoner spell used for nothing. And Wonder has his TP still up. Now, Stress, you know I, uh, I take after Quickshot in a lot of ways. I model myself on him as a caster sometimes. Sometimes. I have a quick stat for you, Stress. Okay. I'm going to call it a medic stat for the time being. Okay. NIP, in games they have won, never lose a dragon. Splice just took an Ocean Drake. Oof. We know the game's over. We know it's, it's done. done. The game is can done. We, can we just tell them to go to game two? Is that... Um, me as well. Yeah. I mean, you might as well. You know you've high. lost. Yeah, you know you've exactly. lost. You are behind in gold as well, 2,000, <laughs> and, and you're going to lose a bit more. Splice, that's only the 17th dragon taken. Didn't need quick stats on that one. We got a whole team to deliver this with a graphic that was nice. That's the least in you know, this split. So, you know... Just secures the win all over. All they had to do was that, and they have uh, finally got it. But look, Splice right now. Ocean Drake was taken a while ago. They take the bot lane tower. They still have teleport advantage to work with. Realistically, NIP are in for the long haul there, here if they really want to get in this game. It means they need to give as much farm as they can to Hiku, which basically keeps him in that bottom lane, or at least pushed under a tower for as long as possible. And that gives Splice a lot of freedom on the map. If there is no damage to contend with, Splice can just freely walk towards any area they know EQ isn't. Ooh, Shook lands onto Cobby, kicks oh. him away though because he flashes the wall, and here come the chains. Splice wanted this fight from the very moment it began. Prophet tries to jump out, but he gets pulled right back into the cage, and Splice get two kills once again. As soon as the kick went the wrong way, NIP lost that fight. They did not get the lockdown onto Cobby. Kobe was able to survive, they lose two, and now Splice are looking to shut down some more in the top lane. They want to try and go for extra objectives. Look, we're only 19 minutes in, there is no Baron to take. Nagne has to flash, but Kobe is not done yet, nor is Wonder. Another kill for the Camille, and Splice are just pugnacious and belligerent. They keep pushing their, their advantage further and further and further. All right, I know we've got two Brits on the desk and two on this caster desk, but that is some flowery vocabulary. Pretty much as flowery as your shirt, but look. I'm pretty sure you were trying to describe this engage from Splice. They're very aggressive. I don't need to mince words on that. They just go under the tower. They go... This is actually the, the first half of the fight that we're seeing on the second end of it. Kobe, the kick missed on him. He ended up getting kicked back towards the safe area of the map. And Splice 
easily able to take down two. And we saw Shook doing what we said he needed to do. He tried to get on towards one of those squishy carries on the back line. It almost worked. If Kobe hadn't flashed across the wall, he would have been kicked back in towards the rest of NIP. But Spice just ever so slightly quicker on the reactions, and it means they have a 4,000 gold lead 20 minutes in. This is disaster for NIP, because even when they've got a gold lead at 20 minutes, they only win about 20% of their matches. They lose every single time they have a gold deficit. You've come prepared with stats. You're like, trying to, you're like this game's going to end super quick. Quick, put as many stats in as we possibly can. Get them all in. It's OK, Medic. We, we got a, it's a best of three. We might have some more. I, it's some great, great points um, on their ability to close games. Honestly, I look at this game and I say, okay, Splice, it's going to be a very difficult game to end up giving away to NIP. Because look, they have the strength in the side lane through Wonder, Trinity Force completed with the Tiamat. NIP is struggling in the team fights because they have no damage outside of Hiku, and even Hiku is only on a static shiv where Kobe has a Blade of the Rune King completed. Hiku doesn't have his Infinity Edge. That means he is two and a half items away from being useful in this game. And coming back to something we discussed in Picks and Bands as well, Prophet did not get the early lead he needed to in this lane. Now Wonder is ahead at 2-0-3, has a Trinity Force, has a Titanic Hydra. Senko's oh, actually caught out. Fight. Shook's yeah. going in on towards Senko's, but look at the damage onto Nagne. He's going to fall as the first in the fray. Down towards the bottom side of this fight, we will see Wonder with a flank. Spicer looking for this. Mickey does have the Glacial Fisher if he wants to go in. Lands the Winter's Bite. Spartal puts a Lantern behind it, but here comes Wonder. They're looking for Shook. Jump straight on towards him with the Hexic Ultimatum. Shook, you can't jump out of that, but he will still try and escape. Spice will chase him down. It's a rampage for Senkux, and it's nine kills to two for Splice. Shook knew all he needed to do was kick Wonder out. The problem is they're so far behind that it's easy to regroup onto a jungler and the reason they didn't go for Hiku there is they know Baron is on the cards and if Shook is still dead for 20 seconds it's an easy take no smite steal available Hiku doesn't even have any damage at this point they aren't even likely to push this tower down because Splice can split focus right now secure the Baron push NIP away from the tower and realistically this game is going to ramp up very quickly for Splice with the Baron buff no TP on profit or wonder but that means they're stuck in the side lane and wonder will win that fight and this is how it all started Nagne remember he's got Banshee's Veil he's got Mercury Treads it's really nice it's not going to help you too much against the damage from Kobe It'll help him get out of some of that crowd control quicker, but when there's three pieces of crowd control, Mercury Dreads won't do all that much to save your life. Fast forward to the rest of the fight, Shook's like, I've got this. I can get out. I can just kick Wanda out of the ultimatum. Ah, oh, damn, they do a lot of damage <laughs> on top of that. And Shook, stunned up, taken down, into the Baron. Splicer in total control. This is the splice we wanted to see as well, Stress. They needed it to send a statement today. They are sitting in the middle of Group B. If they can get these wins, they can look towards getting into playoffs and then perhaps running the gauntlet to Worlds. But if they don't and they come fourth place, there is no chance of them going back to Worlds this year. So they need to be able to defeat teams like NIP easily and then use that confidence to take it into future matchups. That is very fair. I'm just wondering, Medic, do you have another word for me for dominant? Because we might need a couple of synonyms. Let me look up a few. I've got, I've got my words this. to work on Oh, here. hang on. You might need to focus on mid lane. <laughs> Wonder's going to pop down the Hexic Ultimatum. He keeps getting melted away. Oh, and actually, so Wonder good. will just take the kill. That was wonderful play from him. Three versus one didn't even matter in the middle lane because Splice were able to get a kill from it. Now, of course, that does remove the Baron buff from Wanda. That's a, a minor inconvenience at best at this point. And Splice, look at to push through the middle lane. Look at to continue this because, look, they've got the rest of their team fighting abilities up. They have Senkuk's ultimate for damage. They've got Trashy's ult, Kabi's ult, Mickey's ult. Everything is still there to be able to take a fight if NIP wanted to try. And they're now 7,000 gold ahead. Look at Wonder. When you can 2v1 like this, you know you're winning. And I believe even the support is coming closer to this fight as well. So look, Shook manages to connect. It was a nice trap placement out there to make sure they could catch Wonder. And Shook tries to get into the fight, but Wonder, a little bit too much mobility. Even gets onto HeQ under the tower. Make it a 4v1. <laughs> And I'm interested in Shook's build here slightly as well, Stress, because he's gone Dead Man's Plate after the Warriors. He right. is tanky on this Lee Sin. There was an option to go towards a more assassin and more AD heavy Lee Sin here if he wanted to try and snowball that early game. There was the option there. Uh, I've even seen people in solo queue building Dust, Dust Blade Blade. on Lee Sin, which 
It's kind of kind of frustrating. It's to disgusting, see. Um, is what it is, stress. But Shook knows he is basically the initiation tool right now for NIP. He has to go in, he has to go aggressive, and realistically, the mobility that Dead Man's Plate gives him will help a, a small amount, but the ability to stay alive for that moment longer is what he's looking for here. Um, you know, full damage Lee Sin does great in solo queue. Not so much in competitive because he's very easy to get shut down. If you hit him with any kind of crowd control or even Sin result, probably not going to survive very long. <laughs> it's, you should try it at one point. I'm See really bad at mechanics. Lasts. I'm a support main. I cannot do mechanics for the life of me. People flame me in like Wait. gold when I try and auto attack things. Wait, but. You mean like you're not very dexterous to be able to hit the buttons very quickly? I think my fingers precision? are just too fat. I think that's what it Medic, is. Medic, you trained as a surgeon. Why are you telling me this? Like, what? Why do you think I quit? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's not go into that story. That risks lawsuits going through here because, whew, don't want to think about it. But let's come back to the state of the game. <laughs> Stress. Splice now can go for this 1-4 if they want. Camille in the bottom lane, the rest of the team getting vision control around this blue side. Cobby splitting up towards the top as well. And Splice have just been able to dismantle NIP. NIP's early lead evaporated incredibly quickly. Splice looking very much like a team that can challenge for the top sp spots in Group B. The one thing that Splice haven't been able to do is make significant progress into the base of NIP. And now that does allow NIP some breathing room back into this game. And we have to look at potentially missed opportunities from Splice. They haven't been quite as proactive on utilizing Trashy's ultimate to force fights to get uh, NIP and catch them out. Like, they could potentially look for a fight here, but the reason they're not is because of how far away Senkux is. Maybe if Splice were moving as a unit, that tower is easily threatened because of how far ahead Splice are. That would be one area I'd like to see them pushing forward a little bit more. I think part of it as well is losing the Baron buff on Wonder. It means yeah. his split push isn't quite as strong as it could be, but Splice are setting up to methodically take out this second tier of turrets. Do we ever get to the point where he who gets to two, three items and can challenge Nargne out a couple of items when he's got a bit more damage under his belt, can challenge as well? Well, if Splice don't get critical damage on the base now, it is possible. But look, because he Q shows on the bottom side, Splice are very confident moving into the top side. This is what they have to continue doing is every time a second member of NIP commits to the bottom lane, continue pushing forward, try and start fights. Problem is, NIP have a very quick path to the bottom lane through their own base, and that means Splice may end up misreading a situation and over-pushing, but... Splice deciding to five-man oh. group here. Root they will land the chains. Prop is gonna take a lot of damage. Here comes Wonder, jumps in with the Hexagold Maiden, but he's dead already. And we're gonna see Mickey fall low as well. NIP able to hold on to their base, and Narnay wants a little bit more. Is he the lord of the top lane alongside being the lord of the pit? But at the moment, he's the lord of the dance as he tries to dodge around, but he gets taken out as well. He Q melted, oh. outplayed, totally outplayed stress. <laughs> He was just incredibly out mechanic there by the Syndra and Splice are going to look to push in towards this top turret as well. Those are medic mechanics just hit him with the Syndra ultimate, hit the inhibitor and move right through. Okay, so that at first was an over commit from Splice. Wonder just jumps right into the base. He's like, I'm ready to go. Who wants to fight? Finds a couple of members of NIP and NIP turn back around on that. But I mean, NIP... <laughs> Almost gifted an opportunity back into this game by how Wonder actually got... Was that pushed in by Nagne? I'm not sure whether Wonder was trying to jump in as it was, but maybe Nagne actually managed to catch him out. Then Nagne goes aggressive into the fight, tries to dodge around all of this. But look, from here, remember, Hiku, the only damage source, gets too close to Senkux, puts himself right in between the tower and the wall, easy slow to apply into the ultimate Hiku. Drops down 0, 3, and 3. Still nowhere near that damage point we wanted him to get to. Trying to fight against a Syndra when you are four kills behind is like trying to play dodgeball against that really big lad in your high school class. You know you're going to get hit by a ball at some point, and you know it's going to hurt. Wait, I think you're playing dodgeball wrong. You're meant to dodge. You're meant to dodge, but you like... can't, is my point, because this guy is just too good at throwing the balls. Okay, I think we got lost on that. I, yeah, I was imagining okay, maybe, a really maybe wide it wasn't the target. best anecdote. I was like, that guy would be really easy to... I'm quite big. Okay. It's hard to okay, dodge I'm ball sorry. stress. I, I'm not trying to bring up bad memories. I'm sorry, Medic. 
my you entire are quite childhood. I'm, I'm actually a little Baron's scared. gonna be please. Baron's gonna be started here by Spice as they are 10,000 gold ahead. This will be their second of the game, and perhaps with it will spell the end of NIP. TP coming in here from Wonders. They try and join the fight. Spice have turned around. They get the Glacial Prism on towards Nagne, and here comes Wonder from the back line. That's one. They're looking for a lot more, though. They're not content. Mickey gets the kill onto Nagne with a beautiful Winter's Bite, and Shook, Prophet, and Spraddle just have to run away. But will they be chased down oh, by Spice? Oh, Senkux. has the flank here. Wonder has the jump in. Spraddle has the flash, but it's just not enough to get away from Spice. 15 kills to four. Splice are looking for the win. Don't even need the Baron buff. They have the numbers advantage. Five versus two into the base and Splice. It's looked dominant. We didn't have a synonym for it. It doesn't even matter. 30 minutes on the clock. They're going to pick up game one. Devastating, destructive, and absolutely top notch here from Splice. They want a couple more kills to close it out. They'll get the ace. They'll get the Nexus and they'll go 1 0 up over NIP. A lot of people would have expected that result. Um, some people would have questioned how clean it would have been, but I think this game actually played out in, in a lot of the ways you'd expect it to. NIP making the early game plays, trying to get ahead against Splice, utilizing this Lee Sin out of Shook, and it looked to be good, but the problem was this composition, when you start going the defensive route on items, means that Caitlyn just cannot contend against everything Splice was bringing. The Syndra was on point from Senkux and Splice, able to just take the early skirmishes very effectively. And NIP is still unable to get a win in the LCS. I almost called it the Challenger series. series win. I'm, yeah, series win. I'm so used to casting the Challenger series with you, I almost called it the Challenger series. But yes, yeah, still unable to get a series win. They can still come back, but the signs of hope that we looked for coming in the early game presence wasn't really there to the usual effect of NIP. And a lot of that is the fact that Shook's champion pool in the meta, at least what is the most effective, got obliterated in the draft. Five bans from the enemy team, plus one ban from his own team onto the jungle pool. Made it a little difficult for, for Shook to realistically have that easy platform in the game. The Lee Sin just didn't have the effect later on. I'm trying to look and see if perhaps it, one of those second tier tanks would have been a bit better. Skarna, Ramus was still there as well. Something we have seen in LCK that can be played at the highest level. Yeah, it's difficult to know because I think that those champions have very obvious weaknesses that if you haven't practiced, it, it isn't necessarily easy to just put them right into your champion pool, but Shook's gonna need to find something for game two. Yeah, Splice came out swinging against the ninjas in pajamas. Let's send it over to the analyst desk for more on their win. Thank you very much, Medic, all by the book for Splice. They cleanly um, clean this one out and win over NIP in the first game. And we asked a lot of questions beforehand, uh, especially how can NIP win? You said, well, draft something that is easy. They can go a bit, they can force a fight. But it seemed to be quite intricate in the end. Uh, so how would you rate their comp in terms of the game plan you'd made for them? Uh, in terms of the game plan I wanted to make with their five-man mid, a lot of tanks, engaged team fights, I don't think the comp really fit that style. They invested almost everything in the early game. Um, basically saying, you know, they can win bot lane with Caitlyn Thresh, they can maybe win top lane with Jarvan, they can try and get push mid lane with Talia, and then you have a Shook uh, on Lee Sin to gank. That is just very hard to execute, I feel like, especially you already are a, a weaker team. And that's kind of one of the problems for NIP was they didn't really fit with their Misfits meta we saw earlier today. The Misfits meta where Maxler also picked up the Maokai and I thought that was maybe something that Shook could go for because there were a lot of junglers banned out. He honestly didn't have a lot of things to choose from, but a Maokai was open, a Rek'Sai maybe even in some universe was open. So do you think the Lee Sin was detrimental or, or kind of what didn't make this comp come together? I think right now that if you play, pick Lee Sin or, and, or any other early game jungler, you need to be an incredibly good team to execute the early game, get a lead, and then you need to make zero mistakes mid and late game, which is why I would say the meta is not towards these kind of early picks right now, it's more towards these tanks where early game you can play it a bit slower, maybe against the full early game team you'll be 2k behind, but you just have to accept that, get to mid game, go 5 mid, make a pick, and then you instantly win the game. What do you think about the Javan camille matchup top lane, Alfari? I mean, I think Jarvan is a really strong pick, like particularly as a blind pick, which NIP did this game. It's really easy to just like push out a side lane once you get uh, like mid game, and you just roll mid lane, and if Baron's alive, you can start Baron and turn really easily, or you can just engage in the mid lane if they try to contest the push by EQ ulting in. And uh, Camille is like a, a decent answer, like Jax was banned, which is like another answer to Jarvan, so Splice going Camille is like kind of predictable, 
and I went it, and it scales better than Jarvan, but early game it does get pushed in, which was NIP's main opening into the game, I think. Mm -hmm. Having like all pushing lanes in the early game jungler, they just didn't snowball it. Yeah, I mean, we were always saying um, NIP maybe go for something easier than execute, but if early game leads are something they have been able to win, then they shouldn't give that up, because that's almost the only thing they have. Or I mean, yes and no, just because it's so inconsistent and when they do win the early game, like so often it's based on can Shook pull off like two or three early ganks. And we haven't really seen that recently either. So I think when the meta is where you can actually draft like almost pure team fight, those kind of comps often are a little bit easier to play. Like this game, we can actually just already pull up some of the replays we have because it shows early game how where you NAP was supposed to get the advantage with all the pushing lanes. It ended up being stuff like this happening over and over where Spice would just find them in the side lanes and like engage team fights. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about NFP, but obviously Splice won this game and Splice also came out with a, a well-rounded comp. We were asking the question, can some of their individuals step up? And Wonder had a great game, Sankux had a good game, even though they didn't really hit all the skill shots in this particular hit fight. Hit the Syndra ult. They hit the Syndra ult, which is incredibly, incredibly difficult. But uh, how do you think they played it out, Max Lore? Splice? Yeah. Yeah, they did a pretty good job on making sure that Camille ramps up and whenever she has priority, they used it. For example, this TP play they did top lane, it was mainly because the Javan TP'd bot lane and got a, made a pick on the enemy jungler, Sejuani. So they then TP'd on NIP who were overextending, they made a pick and they just completely destroyed them. Even though they missed three ulties, mm -hmm. it just shows the power of a team fight composition. You mess up, but you're still going to get away with it. Mid late game, you scale better than them, so it just... Why would you not pick this kind of comp if you're... I don't think there's any team in the world that can execute an early game comp really well because, as I said, you have to win early and play perfectly mid and late, which is also why, in my opinion, there's a slump on SKT's side because they're not drafting tank support and tank jungler and stuff like this and playing for this ARAM kind of thing. They're still playing early game and it's just biting them back. Oh, I love it. We're to, uh, talking about Splice NIP and we get the SKT, SKT inside. In That's there. why you invite players on the desk. You'd never go there. Oof. I mean, I wouldn't... <laughs> I guess the reason I wouldn't go there is because it's NIP Splice, but... I mean... It was a fantastic analogy, Kind of the same, yeah. Yeah, right. it was a fantastic analogy, uh, but then the big question remains, okay, Splice, we wanted to see more, we wanted to see them win games, but winning versus NIP, much as your victory over Mysterious Monkeys, you'd say this is a game they have to win no matter what. And it's so difficult to say what NIP kind of has to come up with. So do you guys have any ideas? Because Profit has been getting leads in lanes and has been able to get early kills, but how could they leverage that? If it was you, would you pick something completely different that can take over the game? Would you only split push Alfari? I mean, I think their draft this game was like okay. I, 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 like, if they had a tank jungler like a Maokai, like Maxwell said, I would actually like the draft. They have three pushing lanes, and they would actually scale fine with the Maokai. So they should like, be able to get uh, deep walls early game. Should be able to get like roams off and first blood tower for sure. Maybe even like a herald and just they should get advantages early game, and then they should be able to still team fight with the Maokai. So I think their draft was fine. I think they just need to not be so hesitant when they have like so early game champions that are supposed to get leads to actually use them, because they had these early game champions, but then they just use them to just stay even, which is not going to work. All right, well, we'll see if that is the adaptation they make in game two. Splice, they are looking to secure the win against Ninjas in Pajamas coming up after the break. But look, TP's coming through, NIP wanna force Sprasso trying to Ooh. get in the way of the Arctic Assault, but Trashy uses it afterwards. Here comes the wall as Trashy's caught out. Ace in the hole comes down and Prophet gets first blood. Come on, no flash, no flash on Kate. Okay, okay, okay. I got lean. Okay. Good nice. job, good job. You might need to focus on mid lane. <laughs> Wonder's gonna pop down the Hexic Ultimatum. He keep getting melted away. Oh, and actually, so Wonder will just take the kill. Is he the lord of the top lane alongside being the lord of the pit? But at the moment, he's the lord of the dance as he tries to dodge around, but he gets taken out as well. He too melted, oh. outplayed, totally outplayed <laughs> stress. And Wonder has the jump in, Sprutter has the flash, but it's just not enough to get away from Spice. Ah, uh, <laughs> get the Couple more kills to close it out. They'll get the ace. They'll get the nexus and they'll go 1-0 up over NIP.